Hey everyone, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. Now I have my Pixel 6 Pro over here running the stable Android 12. Unfortunately, it's still on the February patch. I don't know what's going on. Quarterly beta program is up and running with March patch. The Android 13 developer preview 2 is out. Android 12 L stable is out for the Pixel 4a and other devices. But this is still not receiving updates for the March. Now I hope it comes in the next couple of days. But still, Android 13 developer preview 2 is out and here are all the changes that you should know about and some are really interesting so make sure to stick till the end of the video a lot of changes to go through with that said this is Shreyas and let's take that out So first things first, this is the lock screen with the always on display on. If I just tap it here, you can see a different kind of a look on the lock screen. First of all, the media player has changed a lot. I will get to that in a while. Over here, you can see the stacking of silent notifications re relatively. The priority one is up here. Now let's just expand it. Let's just click on this pill over here and you can see how it changes the media player is taking up a lot more space and this space remains consistent when you drag down the notification tray even more so this is a really interesting change and a lot of things to go through over here all right now there are some changes in system wide uh, search as well so for example if i go into screenshots now you know in google photos i have a folder called a screenshot and even that is coming up the other two kind of seem consistent apart from pixel tips so that's something that has changed so you can have deeper integration of your files and folders with your universal search on the pixel all right now now let's get into the quick tiles and notification shade now you can see the media player is really different obviously so previously we had a ripple effect over here when we clicked on the play and pause or even any other thing now the interesting thing over here is you can see the play button has gone to a more prominent position over here and not just that this color accent actually changes with the album art that it's being taken from the song you're playing so if i change my song this is similar so you can see now the material view is localized over here and the pill which is the media source and the play button is changing with the album art over here which wasn't the case because over here you can see everything is consistent and matching the device theme according to material view that's about it and obviously we have a change over here you can see the media picker not just that one major change is that when you don't have any uh, devices paired you will be shown pair new device now if i go into the media picker you can see pair new device now this is a slick shortcut for pairing new bluetooth devices so that's really Great. and apart from that nothing has changed you can see the expansion of the music widget over here which actually remains consistent now moving on you can see an interesting change apart from the edit button the user profile power button and the settings button have moved down here now this looks nice uh, a bit unsymmetrical in my eyes so it could vary about your liking not just that you can see over here the animation of the user profile is quite different and the ad user logo has also changed over here and not just that the pill shaped uh, around the user settings and done is also adhering to mat material you let's go into the power menu over here you see a card sliding from the side and here it expands from the button and goes back down in it. so they are really refining the animations over here which i like and this is the settings button as always taking you to the settings menu and not just that on the uh, topic of the notification shade let's look into few of the quick tiles real quick now you might be aware about the mic and camera access quick tiles now that has been integrated into one quick tile which does not exist on uh, stable android 12 as of now which is security and privacy so once you go in here you get quick uh, enabling and disabling of your uh, mic camera and location and when you go into security settings it gets you to the security hub of android this is actually a nice integration if people are not really using the quick tiles for mic and camera access apart from that we saw in the last beta about the qr code scanner now this is working fine now obviously since it's kept down you can see it's working fine so that's another good news this is a really works quick and another thing i noticed is that when you have a qr code at the corner of the screen it will automatically detect so and do so now for example i'm going to keep it to the side of the screen and you can see how the qr code will realign itself and scan it 
yeah you can see how it scanned it even though it was at an awkward angle and this automatically happened i did not do anything about it you have a quick tile for live transcribe you have sound notifications now this is a new feature which is gonna come in uh, you can see over here it actually looks forward for a certain type of uh, sounds and will alert you on this device or on your wearables now this can be done for emergency notifications if you have smoke fire alarms ringing in your house if you have headphones on you have knocking doorbell dog barking and baby sounds now these are all really useful when you have um, your earphones out or no noise cancelling on and same you can see on appliance beeping landline phone ringing and water running interesting thing uh, we'll see how it benefits uh, in the future and i'm sure and now another thing that got added over here is the active app now it could be very small but let me just expand it very nice animation pops up into the middle of here and you can see a stop if you are having a session on another small change is about the device controls over here in stable android it was called device controls and went into home and over here it's called home itself and nothing more and it goes into the same menu as before just a change in logo this logo is again carried forward into the lock screen as well you can see the logo has changed over here as well all right now let's go into the settings of both these a lot of things have added over here for example if you go to connect a device and go to connection preferences you can see a new field has been added called as fast pair so now you can if you want you can disable scanning nearby devices for fast pair support so you know a lot of devices have fast pair support like the pixel buds the wf 1000 xm force etc and few headphones as well those prompts will be completely removed if you have that disabled another really cool thing that got added recently is per app languages now let me open a random app you can go over here and see a language section now in this language section you can go in and see the system language you can change it to so many languages now and you can do it at a per app basis whichever app supports it so this is just an example there are other apps which will eventually support it and should support it so that's something really great all right so now now let's get into the privacy dashboard so if i go into the privacy dashboard over here you can see that a few fields have added first of all so you can see that music and other audio is a separate uh, from files and media from before not just that you have a notifications tab added over here which was not there before and just for reference you can see how the privacy feature looks over here so whenever you open a particular app if it has a uh, option for pushing notifications to you in any form you can allow or uh, don't, not allow it completely and you will have granular settings obviously in its per app permission or notification settings another small change which has come in over here is in the do not disturb mode now you can see the do not disturb mode is called priority mode over here so let's just go into the menu turn on now is renamed as turn on so that's there and you have a few more granular settings over here and you can go into your schedules you will see the ui has also changed you have a pill shaped toggle over here rather than check boxes all right so now another thing which is of battery saver so let's just quickly go into battery saver so now if i go into extreme battery saver you can see essential apps and when you go into essential apps the thing is that first you had all your essential apps with which were compulsory all the time grayed out and just scattered alphabetically now the difference is that they are stacked together over here so that's a pretty nice thing to do in terms of categorization not just that you got a few more filters over here you can see over here it's written frequently used and you have battery usage which consumes more battery or just in terms of uh, naming scheme all right now a small change in terms of sound and vibration now you can go in here and see a few more granular settings over here now when you go into the vibration and haptics you can see few more over here like you can see few toggles done over here instead of sliders and you have a lot of granular control over which one should react when now another change is in the display so when you go into something like font size when i go display size and 
text. Now both the font size and the display size are concised into one menu. Over here font size is different and display size is just under it. And you have a preview of it nicely with app icons and the fonts written over here. Not just that, you get few more toggles which are kind of accessibility settings. You can make them bold. You can see a preview over here. You can turn on high contrast as well. And you can see how it changes as and when you do it. Another small change over here is when you go into screen saver, you have only one option over here with a clock and a setting where how you want it and if you want it dim here you have more options like clock colors and photos not just that you can set over here how when it will activate just like here and you can customize over here with a pill you can see the styles over here which was hidden in the settings button over here you can go into photos as well and customize which all you want them to have access to and which accounts and which folders should they have access to not just that you have few more settings like when to use it photos should fill screen or not and an animated zoom effect quickly dive into the settings and go into add user so when you go into the multiple user setting you can see over here the prompt is similar but when you go into an existing user you can see how the photo picker is quite different now over here you can choose an image or take a photo here you get more options to color code it take a photo or choose a photo in terms of visual representation pill over here on done is gets highlighted so a lot of changes came in especially with the notification tray the quick toggles which are changing and also the placement of the power menu and settings button not just that a lot of granular changes i really like the per app language could be really beneficial for people speaking local languages or even when you're around in the world and really excited to see how the open betas turn out for android 13 google io is coming up in may so i'm really excited about that i did not face any major bugs over here uh, personally that's about it for this particular video thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video